Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, you, you, are you John Schlitt? You know it, the one and only. He was very easy for the rest of us to sing with, and we thought John should be our be our guy. He just had a voice that would never stop. Everybody agreed that, that John had a great voice and was a good singer. John and I grew up in the same small rural town, central Illinois. Her dad went to ask her her hand for marriage. He uh, looked at me and said, John, you're a good boy, but not good enough. Hold it. I just was told that I couldn't marry my girlfriend. It was the 70s, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I learned how to drink and snort to where I could be sober or act sober. I, I learned how to control it. You know, that I, I can get this under control. You know, yeah, you're right. I'm glad you said something. And we said, no, John, the, you don't understand. This is over. Yeah, John was out of, had been out of music now five years. I had no intentions of ever singing again. A prophet comes up to me and says, John, you're going to have a big change soon. And I'm going, oh no, not again. Bob Hartman called. I'll check with John and see. And I said, well, this is Bob Hartman from Petra. And said, would you consider singing for Petra? And I, <laughs> I mean, that came out of the blue. We're in the middle of a new project now. We hope you're just excited about it. Thank you so much for everything. Goodbye. <laughs> I mean, his personality is perfect. That was the start of the Petra that I think really went forward with John long lasting career. I can't describe the feeling. I will say that that's probably the closest I've ever been to feeling like the Beatles. We thought we were going to save them. They saved me. He's, a, he's one of the most unique people I've ever met. John is a genuine person. That dude lives what he says. Because that's what the frat guy does. He teaches the people how to dance to their songs.